this video, we're going to talk about a more heuristic method for converting finite state machines to regexes than the very formulaic algorithm we've already talked about. So what's important to know before you start this video is what regular expressions are and the, uh, having a brief idea of the algorithm FSM to regex, you know, the one with all of the uh, empty set transitions. So when we write down the English pseudocode for this heuristic, most of the, the writing is actually this uh, preliminary stage where we're trying to turn the um, finite state machine into something that we can work with um, to eventually get down to something that tells us what the regex is. So if we expanded our definition of what a transition could be, so that instead of it just being one element of the alphabet, it could be any regex, then if we ever had a finite state machine that looked like this, then that regex would be exactly the regex that describes the language that that finite state machine accepts. So the heuristic is just a method for gradually turning a larger finite state machine down into somewhat something that looks like this here, whilst preserving the language that the finite state machine accepts. Because as long as every time we do a modification, the machine still accepts the same language, then eventually if we get down to something that looks like this, we have the regex for the, the language accepted by the original state machine. So the only parts that actually do anything um, in terms of conversion is just this six, step six here, which is just a more heuristic version of the FSM to regex algorithm that we've already talked about in class. So let's work through an example with this one. And the first bit we're gonna do is just the conversion into um, a more standardized form. So the first thing we do is removing unreachable states because obviously if we can't get to a certain state, then that state's not playing any role in the representation of the language that we accept. Remember that the regex generates the set of strings accepted by the language. It says nothing about, nothing directly about the um, things not accepted by the, by the language. So when we have dead states or states that we can't reach, they're not really saying anything about the representation of the language that is accepted. They're more about things that aren't accepted. So we remove unreachable states because they're, they're not going to play a part. If after we've done this, we have a machine that doesn't have any accepting states at all. So for instance, if the only accepting states at the start were impossible to get to, then we just return the empty set. Because obviously, if there's nothing in our machine that accepts, then our machine doesn't accept any string. Now, we're going to be consistently ripping out states up until we get to something that looks like one non-accepting start state, one transition to an accepting state. So if our start state is part of a loop, then we are going to eventually need to rip it out um, in order to get something like this, and that's going to be problematic. So what we do instead is we use the fact that we can have an epsilon transition representing a regex as well. So in this case here, we've got this start state one, which actually has uh, is part of one loop, which goes through state two. It's also part of a larger loop that goes through state two, three, and all the way back to one. And even if it wasn't part of those loops, if it also had, say, a loop on itself, then we would need to modify it. So all we do is we make a new special start state. So I'm going to call it state four. We make that the start state, and then we have an EPS transition over here. Because what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to rip one out now as we're going through, and then we'll still just have this original um, single transition out state four here. And you can see now that four is no longer part of a loop. If there is more than one accepting state, so in this case, there is more than one accepting state, or if there's any ways to get back out of an accepting state, then we would need to modify it for it to fit this definition that we've got here. So what we do is in the case that we can get out of an accepting state, which is the case here because two can move over to three and get itself out of the accepting state, or if there's more than one, just like in this case, then we make a new accepting state, which we'll call five, and we just make EPS transitions from all of the current accepting states. So this isn't a transition. All of the current accepting states here, we make EPS transitions, and then we stop these states being accepting. Finally, if, once we've done all of this, if M only has one state, then we just return the empty string. And the only way that this can happen is if M has just one 
accepting state that doesn't have any transitions out of it. Because if there were any transitions out of it, we would have added a new state. So at, in stage four, we would have made something that has more than one state. So obviously the only way we can get to step five here with something that has one state is something that has one accepting state with no transitions out of it. Um, it it's not particularly important. You'll rarely come across these sort of things, but it's important for our method to deal with all of the possibilities. So what the met the resulting um, machine looks like after we've done all of these modifications, you can see down here. So you can see that looks exactly like we had before, but we've now got this new accepting state, state 5, with Epson transitions from 1 and 2, which are no longer accepting, and a new start state 4 with an EPS transition into the old start state 1. So the next major part is the repeated removing of states. So basically what we do is we look at the machine that we've got, we pick a state, and it's usually, there are good states to pick and there are states to pick that will make the, the method difficult for you. So learning which states to pick can be important. We'll pick a state, we'll take it away from the finite state machine, and then we'll add in as many transitions as we need so that the machine still does what it originally did and because we're removing states, we're going to need to have transitions that actually have larger and larger regexes to um, correspond to all of the different loops and multiple um, hop paths we could have gone through the original state. And then at the end, we'll get down to the point at which we only have the start state and the accepting state. And then at that point, we just re return the regex that labels the only um, transition that we'll have. So it might be worth you looking at this machine on the right here and thinking about, for starters, which um, of the three states, one, two, and three, because we don't remove the, the start state and the accepting state, we leave them in, because the whole point is to get down to the point where we just have one transition from this state here with some regex R on it. So look at this and think, which of the states has the least transitions going in and out of it because that's a good rule of thumb state to remove because it will simplify things as much as possible and also think about for example if we removed one of the states what regex would you have what new transitions would you have to have to put in and what regexes would they have on them to be able to still get between all of the states in the way that you can in this current machine in the new machine. So I'd suggest pausing it and thinking about that for a little while, playing with some pen and paper, and then we'll go through and do it. So you probably realise that the state with the simplest paths through it is actually state 3. We can see that state 1 has transitions going to 2 and, three, uh, two and 5, sorry. Um, state 2 has transitions going to 1, um, 3 and 5, but um, state 3 only has one loop on itself and one transition coming from 2 and one transition going to 1. So if we move that out, we can wipe it out and then we only need to add in w one path from 2 to 1 that gives us a regex that represents all the ways we could get to between 2 and 1 through 3. So what we are able to do, as well as being able to go from 2 to 1, using this B transition. In this machine, we can also get from 2 to 1 by going, taking an A transition through 3, 0 or more A transitions back into 3, followed by one transition back to B. So the regex that that looks like is A, A clean, B. So what we do is we put in this new transition here, A, A clean, B. And we notice that we already have this transition here, so we can actually only represent that as one overall transition. I'm going to change colours here. And have that labelled with the old option, union, with our new regex that we've had to put in there to correspond to make up for the fact that there is no longer state three. Now if we look at this finite state machine, there are no ways to get between any of the other states using three without going through another state. And so as long as we make sure that all of the transitions that just go through three are accounted for, we'll have something that still accepts all of the possible strings it could have, just without using state three. So that's exactly what that looks like. We end up with this one transition over here, A, A star, B, 
and that's really the same as having just one transition with this regex here. Now, the next state to pull off may be difficult for you. Obviously, we can't pull out 4 and 5, so we only have the choice between 1 and 2. Now, I say that the best state here to pull out is state 2. And the reason being is because we won't need to modify this transition from state 4. So we'll still just have transitions between 4 and 1, transitions from 1 onto itself, and then transitions from 1 to 5. Whereas if we pull out state 1, we're going to have to modify stuff going between all of them, because currently we don't have a transition directly from state 4 to state 2. So I say we rip out state 2. So what, does that ha what do we have to add in there to make it possible to still accept all of the original strings? So obviously, state 1 can get back to itself by going through state 2. So in this case, that's just a transition that looks like A, B because there's no loops on 2. But we also know that we can get through um, this transition back as well. So really, what, we can, what makes it simpler is if we just had this original transition labelled as A, A star B, or B, and what we end up with is a transition here that is A followed by the A, A star B, union B, and if we want to, we can simplify that regex because we know that concatenation distributes over union. So we can say that this is really AA, A star, B, or AB. But we can also get from state 1 to 5 through state 2 by taking these transitions here. Now, remember that concatenating the empty string onto something doesn't change anything. So what we need here is that we can take an A transition followed by nothing and get to 5. So we need to modify this transition on here to be the same as it was, so EPS, but unioned with this new path here. And remember that A concatenated with EPS is just A, so we end up with EPS union A. Now, we note that there's no other ways to get from one state to another going through just state 2 than these two methods, so this is all we needed to do, and this is what we end up with. So you can see here we've got the, the regex written in a different order, because remember union has no order that matters, along with the, the new transitions here, which when we have two transitions between the same, same pair of states, we usually represent them instead using a union. So at this point, we've only got our start state 4, our accepting state 5, which we want to leave in. So our only option is to remove 1, and then we should end up with just one transition between 4 and 5 that describes everything. So as always, whenever you're going through these, if you ever end up with a pair of transitions like we have here, instead, just represent them using unions. So the ways that we can get between 4 and 5 are to take this transition, this transition 0 or more times, and then this transition here. You should really understand this concept here because this is what we actually do every time we rip a state out with the formal algorithm, as just we'll notice this intuitively. So what do we end up with? Well, we end up with one thing here, which I'm going to write the regex over. Sorry, I'm going to write the regex down here to make things simpler. So what do we end up with? Well, we can take the empty string. And then we have this thing here, and zero or more times that as a regex is just all of that cleaned. So we have AB union AA A star B cleaned. And then we can take this transition here, which is just A union EPS. So what we end up with is exactly that. Once our start state 4, one transition to our accepting state 5, no other transitions, and that single transition is labelled with the regex. And so at this point, we know that that regex, provided we did all of our previous steps correctly, represents the language or generates the language that is accepted by the original finite state machine. So I'll talk about this slide in a second, but the, the key thing about the regex, that we, the uh, FSM to regex heuristic that we talked about just before, is that it's really no different than the the algorithm that we actually talked about, but instead of drawing all of these extra empty set transitions and um, following a, a rote method, 
which is it's good to know that there is such a road method, but that is just a way that you can go through and convert them by hand on some paper in a way that um, you can use your, your own visual intuition to simplify the, the steps and minimize the amount of writing that you have to do. So what I'd like to talk about at this point here is a method where a finite state machine where when we follow either the, the heuristic or the, the formal algorithm, we end up with a really complicated regex. And that's this one here. So it's just the finite state machine that accepts the languages that have um, an even number of A's and an odd number of B's in them, where order doesn't really matter. matter. So you might like to sit and think for a little bit, and I'll answer questions by email, but sit and think for a little bit and ask why it's so easy to represent this language using a finite state machine, but why, when we convert it down to a regex, do we get this ugly monstrosity? Because understanding the difference between these representations and the, the assumptions the representations make and the attributes that the representations have, like finite state machines tend to have things, do a lot of things where, you know, counting with respect to some modulo. So in this case, we're counting with respect to modulo two because we're talking about even or oddness, whereas regexes tend to talk about things like a a representation, a simple string representation of the, the language, but where order is important. When you look at those things, and then you look at these two representations, you should be able to, in your head, come up with why the finite state machine is a nice, concise representation for this language, but the regex is a terrible representation. All right, so what we did in this video was go over a slightly more intuitive way to convert finite state machines to regexes. And at the end, we talked a little bit about when, for which sorts of languages finite state machines might be better, a better, a simpler representation, and for which sort of languages regexes may or may not be the, the simplest, most concise representation. So if you had any questions about the example on the slide before, just email me and then I can tell you what the result is. But preferably email me with some thoughts that you've had on the question or what you currently think the situation is because the most important thing when it comes to learning is you trying yourself. Me spoon feeding you the information over and over again is just not going to make it sink in there and it's certainly not going to develop those cognitive skills and soft skills that you need as well as knowledge on formal languages and the theory of computation because those sort of skills are actually often more important themselves than the raw knowledge.